Hi, welcome to The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my video lesson is on ratios. Our objectives today are that you will use rational numbers along with mathematical operations to complete ratio tables. You will also simplify complex ratios and find unit rates. Here's the question I want you thinking about as I proceed through the lesson. How can you use a ratio to complete a table of equivalent ratios? Let's review what a ratio is. A ratio compares two quantities. So I have a set of figures here that we're gonna to use to describe ratios. First, let's review that a ratio can be written three different ways. We can write it with a relationship with a colon of A to B. We could write it as a fraction A over B or we could express it with the word two. I tell my students all three ways are acceptable. One is not more correct than the other, but if you're given one with a colon, I would keep it in the form that it's been given to you, unless you're writing it from scratch. Now a ratio can represent a part to a part relationship. So if we look at our set of figures up here, we have part that is circles and another part that is triangles. So we could express that as ratio, of two circles to three triangles, or two over three, or two to three. We can also have a ratio represent a part to a whole relationship. So if we talk about just our circles being our part of our whole, then we have two circles out of the five objects, or two over five, or two to five. We could have also said our part was our triangles, which would have then been three to five, or three over five, or three to five. We also can turn a ratio into a rate or a unit rate. It's kind of when we talk about a quadrilateral being a rectangle or a square, we can keep getting more specific. So we have a bakery menu here which tells us the cost of cupcakes. When we're talking about a rate, a rate compares two quantities using different units. So in our previous slide, when I talked about a ratio, it was just shapes, circles and triangles. Now we're actually talking about dollars and cupcakes. So that adds a quantity or a unit to what we're talking about in our ratio. So our ratio here is a rate because it's $24 for 12 cupcakes. We're comparing the cost to what we're buying. Here we have a unit rate because it compares a quantity of one unit to another quantity. So we always want to think of that as a denominator of one, right? So it's dollars per cupcake. So when you hear per or for one, that is a unit rate. So it tells you how much one costs or how much you could get for one. So here we know that our cupcakes are $2 each. So that's $2 per cupcake, our unit rate. So we have a rate and a unit rate, which are also ratios. They're just specific ratios. Now we're gonna calculate unit rate. We're given the nutritional label for frosting shows that a half a tablespoon of frosting has 5 fourths grams of fat. So we're asked to find out how many grams of fat are in one tablespoon of frosting. So if we have that we have 5 fourths of gram in a half a tablespoon, we wanna know how many grams per tablespoon. This is what we call a complex fraction, this rate, because it has a fraction in either the numerator or the denominator, it's complex. It could also have a fraction expressed as a decimal. So if your numerator or denominator, either one of them or both are a fraction or a decimal, it's complex and you need to simplify it. Here's how we do that. Remember, a fraction is a ratio, but it's also a division problem. So I can take this 5 fourths over 1 half and rewrite it as 5 fourths divided by 1 half. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal to solve. So we keep 5 fourths, change division to multiply, and flip. Our reciprocal of 1 half is 2. Now we're going to multiply our numerators, which is 10, and 4 times 1, our denominators, is 4. Simplify. Both numerator and denominator are divisible by 2 because they're even. So we get five halves, which can be written as two and a half. So our unit rate is two and a half grams per tablespoon. Turn. I want you to find the unit rate here. A swan flies one and one fourth miles every two thirds of a minute. Find the unit rate. 
Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So our unit rate is going to be miles per minute instead of miles for two-thirds of a minute. So we have a complex fraction here. I'm going to rewrite one and one-fourth as an improper fraction, five-fourths, divided by two-thirds. So we're going to change this to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of two-thirds is three-halves. Let's multiply. Five times three is 15. Four times two is eight. So rewrite this as a mixed number. We know that one and seven-eighths, eight goes in once with seven left over. So the swan flies one and seven-eighths miles per minute. Now we're going to discuss equivalent ratios. So these are ratios that are equal to each other. So think of fractions that are not in simplest form, and when you simplify it, it's an equivalent ratio in simpler form. Well, we can extend these using ratio tables as a way to find, order, and organize our equivalent ratios. So let's look at this problem. Your math class has 24 students. The ratio of girls to boys is 5 to 3. How many boys are in the class? So we have girls and boys, and then I've added this row for total because we could have part to part or part to whole. So they've given us the ratio of girls to boys, but they've told us the whole class has 24. So we have a part to part relationship here and then a whole class number. So let's fill out our ratio table. We know that if there are five girls, there are three boys, giving us a total of eight students in that case. Well, an equivalent ratio would be if I multiply everything by two. Five times two is 10, three times two is six. So if I have 10 girls and six boys, that's 16 students in the class. Notice that eight times two is 16. Everything here has an equivalent relationship. So the ratio five to three is equivalent to the ratio 10 to six. Now let's look at multiplying by three. Five times three is 15. Three times three is nine. 15 plus nine is 24. Also eight times three is 24. So notice our part to part has a relationship with a part to a whole. I'm noticing here that I now have a total of 24, which is what we were headed for. We wanted to know about a class of 24 students. So our question is, how many boys are in this class? Well, here's our boys, nine. If there are 24 students, nine of them are boys. So there are nine boys in the math class. Your turn. I have a ratio table here that is somewhat completed for you. I would like you to use the relationships that we just discussed and complete the missing values in the table, and then state three equivalent ratios. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So the first, the only ratio in our table is the ratio of milk to chocolate syrup to make our chocolate milk. It says we need a half a cup if we put two tablespoons in. I'm noticing here that if these are all going to be equivalent ratios, two to four was two times four. So one half times two would be one. So if we look at this as multiply by two, then I have to multiply by two here. Now I'm going to look at one and three fourths written as seven fourths. So this would be one times seven fourths would equal this value. So that means I need to multiply four by seven fourths to fill this ratio in. Four times seven fourths would be seven. Now I have one more. Let's write two and a half as an improper fraction. And I'm going to go back over here to one. One half times five would be five halves because I multiply the numerator by five and keep the denominator. So if I multiply two by five, I get 10. All right, now you could have done this different ways and thought about it in different ways, and that is fine. Here we have, I'm going to list all four ratios that are given, the equivalent ones. You just needed three. So one ratio is a half a cup of milk to two tablespoons of chocolate syrup. One cup of milk to four tablespoons of chocolate syrup. So you could have said half to two, 
1 to 4. You didn't need to have the units. 1 and 3 fourths to 7 tablespoons. And 2 and a half cups of milk to 10 tablespoons. So these are our four equivalent ratios. You needed to list three. So there you have it. That's my lesson on ratios for you today. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I'll hope you subscribe and come back soon. Have a great day.